Okay, hello and welcome. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through this exercise where we are trying to find the firm's optimal demand for input X, given the following production technology and making some assumptions about the price of input, uh, price of the input and price of the output. Okay, so we're saying a, a competitive firm produces output via the following production technology, Y is equal to minimum of X and 50. Using omega as the price of input X, and assuming the output price is a dollar, find the firm's demand for X. Okay, so the first thing is we're staring at this, we realize we have a Leontief or complements production function. And as a matter of fact, as you're staring at this, you're like, well, kinda, that looks sort of like what we've seen. Although this is weird because here is a variable and here's a constant. Well, so one thing you could think about is this is a second input that has been fixed at the level of 50. And so that we have like a short run maximization problem, uh, if that is true. So, all right, at the optimal use of X, it has to be it has to be the case that X star is gonna be equal to 50 is equal to Y upper bar, where Y upper bar is some given level of output, right? So for a given level of output, it's gotta be the case that Y is equal to X and Y is equal to 50. Remember with one of these production technologies, you could replace the comma with an equal sign. Why? Well, that's sort of a requirement for efficiency. Anything other than these being equal at the optimals can involve some degree of waste and then you're not optimizing. Okay, so given our recognition that our optimal use of input X has to be 50, we are on the way to coming up with the demands, but remember demands are gonna depend on the price of the factor or the, the inputs uh, factor inputs price. And so we can actually come up with something a little bit more, um, we could pin down something a little bit more careful here. So in order to do this, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to some piece of information we have not yet exploited. And that is the assumption that we have a competitive firm. So we're gonna have a competitive firm, we're gonna think about like what's necessary for, for profit maximization. And so I'm gonna write down the profit function. I'm gonna write down the profit function, think about profit maximization. Well, profits for this firm are gonna be the price of, well, the amount of output times the output price minus the use of the expenditure on the input. So the input price times the use of the input. And so, okay, we had a factor, the output price was one, the factor price was omega, so we'll have y minus omega x is gonna be our profit function. Well, if we're at, if we're, if we're at zero economic profit, as you would in the, in the competitive market, or if we have positive profit, right? Because you could have positive profit in the short run in a competitive market. So I'm gonna say profit is greater than or equal to zero, then we must have the following. Ah, I should have a, I should have a, uh, or equal to here, Never mind. So this is the following statement. And then if, so we'd have Y minus omega X is bigger than zero or plugging in the values we have. Well, we assumed at the optimal y is going to be 50 and x is going to be 50 so i'm going to replace y with 50 and x with 50 so 50 minus omega 50 is positive positive. and then just rearranging we'll find that our condition for positive profits is that well the input price has to be less than one well why is that the case you can look back up at our production function actually just look at our profit function and see well if if we're using 50 units of x and we're using 50 units of y when are we profitable if the output price is a dollar well when the input price is less than a dollar right so that's pretty that should be pretty uh, straightforward take us take a look at that but we're not done because we could have something else we want to pin down the demands fully we could have a, a situation where the input price is bigger than one what do you do then well our competitive firm if the input price is going to be is gonna be bigger than the output price in this situation. Remember the input price is, is like the variable portion of our cost function, right? The fixed portion of our cost function was, uh, was this 50 here, right? And so the variable portion of our cost function is this omega. And if, if the price of the input is less than the price of the output, that's gonna give us our short run shutdown condition. So yeah, we would shut down, profits would be uh, profits would be negative if the out, if the input price is bigger than the output price, which is this one. Therefore, the optimal use of the input zero. You're gonna you're gonna shut down. You're only gonna incur the fixed cost, which we haven't actually said anything about. We just assumed might be the case. Uh, but 
never mind because we haven't actually asked for that. All we wanted to know was to find the was to find the demand for X, and we have done that. We have found that if the input price is less than the output price, right? Actually, I should have maybe even, so this is specific to this example. Uh, but if the input price is less than the output price, then we'll demand 50 units of X. And if the input price is greater than the output price, we will demand zero units of X. And so this is our demand for, uh, for the factor X, given the production technology that we had right up here. Okay, very good.